Prologue 3, The Kind Knight. I just don't know what I'm supposed to do with you anymore. No pony even comes close to your academic scores. Your spell work is the best I've ever seen. And your healing. I think you'd give some of the clerics a run for their money. The stony-faced Pegasus mare behind the ancient mahogany desk's face hardened. But your blade work is worse than many of the brand new recruits. You really won't reconsider being reassigned to the temple. The target of her eye, if possible, shrank back into a flowing pink mane even more. Well, well, I... The captain raised a hoof, cutting her off. I know, I know. Your father refuses to let you transfer. He ignores every suggestion I send. Last time he threatened to have me busted down to Squire if I brought it up again. The young Pegasi lowered her head further, so much so her long hair touched the floor. I'm sorry. The apology was more akin to a squeak. Fluttershy, you're a kind, gentle mare. It's my opinion, if you grew a little backbone, you'd be the finest paladin ever produced by the knighthood. You don't like fighting? That's good. We're not supposed to like fight like the fighting. But sometimes it's unavoidable. Sometimes a threat to the safety of the realm and her people isn't going to listen to kind words. Sometimes we have to do something we don't like. For the good of all. I know this isn't where you want to be, but... You're wrong! The captain's eyebrows shot up at the sudden and vehement protest. That's not it at all. I do want to be here. I'm proud to be a member of the Order, and even prouder that you'd consider me good enough to be a Wonderbolt someday. I just... All the strength left her voice as if some pony had deflated a bellows. I just can't follow through with my swings. I'm great with my sword, really I am. But the thought of hurting something, or even some pony, it twists my stomach in knots. Captain Spitfire cut an impressive figure in a sleek form fitting mithril armor. The lightweight metal allowed her speed and aerial maneuverability to remain completely unimpeded. The Wonderbolt's insignia proudly embraced upon her chest. Only her helm was set aside, letting her wind-swept mane free into the air. Many ponies joked about how she was in full armor all the time, but she brushed it aside stating that she needed to be ready for trouble at a moment's notice. Spitfire rose from her desk and came around to Fluttershy's side. Walk with me, Squire. Responding immediately, the off-timid mare rose to her hooves and fell into step with the captain. Your father is the head of the order. He absolutely refuses to allow me to remove you from duty or to transfer you to the temple. That being said, I can't take the chance of sending you out with your fellow knights, only to have you falter on the battlefield. It's not just your own life on the line, but your brothers and sisters in arms. They're depending on you just as much as the ponies we fight to protect. If you can't fight, you'd only be a hindrance. It occurs to me that some of this might be my fault. I haven't taken as much of an active role in your development as I should have. Fluttershy's heart sank as she realised where Captain Spitfire was leading her. So I'm going to give you a chance to prove you deserve to be a real knight, that you can handle yourself on the battlefield if backed into a corner. T technically my sire should be doing this. Technically, but he's investigating a disturbance in the Everfree and not here right now, and he's in complete agreement with me over all this. We discussed it at length. We can't have you jeopardising your fellows. Spitfire calmly strolled into the practice arena, drawing many curious looks from the other paladins in squires currently training there. You and I are going to have a practice bout. If I like what I see, we'll figure things out from there. If I don't, I'll arrange to have it so you're doing desk work from now until the day your father retires, at which time you can transfer to the temple. Am I clear? Forcing herself not to kneel over from all the stress, Fluttershy could only nod. I asked you a question, Squire. Y yes ma'am. Good. Get a suit of practice armour and meet me in the ring. The young Pegasus mare sighted as the captain calmly strode to the ring, hefting a wooden sword and shield for herself. Moving to the racks of leather armour, Fluttershy shrugged 
the breastplate over her chest and fastened it securely. Securing the shield to her left foreleg, she belted the wooden sword around her flanks and climbed into the ring opposite the captain. Spitfire smoothly drew her fox sword, raising it in a salute. Fluttershy did likewise, crouching into a ready stance. The captain made the first move, of course, launching herself forward with a powerful thrust, wasting no time in trying to land a telling blow. Fluttershy, to the captain's surprise, didn't shriek, run or duck. She smoothly raised her shield to intercept the incoming blade and deflect it, responding with a swift slash of her own and very nearly striking Spitfire in the chest. The older mare backed away, eyeing Fluttershy in a new light. You didn't seem very hesitant there. Well, they're just wooden swords. I know I'm not really going to hurt you. Spitfire huffed softly and lunged in again. Fluttershy raised her shield to block, but the experienced captain reversed her strike and switched to a lightning-fast vertical strike that cracked solidly against the bottom of her opponent's muzzle. Fluttershy staggered back in a daze, her jaw throbbing. Does that not hurt? Now the younger Pegasus narrowed her eyes, just a bit. Surprising their captain a second time, she launched an offensive. Swift jabs had Spitfire backing away or raising her shield in a constant attempt to block. The ferocity of Fluttershy's attack had caught Spitfire completely off guard and one of the strikes slipped through her guard, slamming into her shoulder and sending waves of numbing pain up the leg and through her barrel. The gathered crowd oohed and aahed respectively. Typically, when Fluttershy would practice, it was only in private, away from prying eyes. She kept her eyes focused on Spitfire, however, using the adrenaline of the fight to tune out the sounds of other ponies watching her. The pair settled in to give her into a give and take routine soon. Spitfire would attack and be blocked by Fluttershy, then Fluttershy would do the same. It was clear to all watching that the captain was the superior swordsman, but the timid young squire was no sh slouch. Spitfire stepped back and raised her blade in a salute again, blinking it at the erupt end. Fluttershy did the same. The younger of the pair was sporting more than a few new bruises. But Spitfire had picked up a couple new welts herself. The two stepped out of the ring, replacing their practice gear, Fluttershy waiting quietly for the captain to speak. Indicating Fluttershy to follow with a nod of her head, the captain started back the way they'd came. So, clearly you know how to handle a sword. The problem isn't physical then, it's mental. Fluttershy sighed softly. I guess so. I'm sorry. Spitfire stopped outside the squire's bar barracks. Don't apologise to me. Don't apologise to yourself. The only pony you're letting down right now is you, Fluttershy. You have the potential for greatness in you. I know it. Being good with a sword isn't what makes a paladin who they are. It's what they do off the battlefield that's more important. Even so, there are times when you have to use force. You say you want to be here. If that's the case, you need to find something you feel is worth fighting for. Fluttershy lowered her eyes as she considered the captain's words. Yes, ma'am. I'm apologising again and you'll be doing push-ups until dinner. You're dismissed for the day, squire. I suggest you take some time and do some serious thinking. With a smart salute to her, de to her departing superior, Fluttershy turned and stepped into the room she shared with several of her younger fellows. She was the oldest squire by more than a couple of years. By the time a pony had reached her age, they had either become a full paladin or been dropped from the order. Wiggling out of her tabard and folding it gently into the footlocker at the end of her bed, she delicately removed her saddlebags, slinging them over her flanks. Almost as an afterthought, she fastened her proper sword and shield across her back. No sense going into the most dangerous forest in the kingdom unprepared. Walking through the Citadel of Light, Fluttershy found her fellows paying more attention to her than she preferred. What surprised her most of all, however, was the respect in many of the eyes she saw looking back at her. Feeling her cheeks burning with embarrassment, she quickly quickened her step 
into a brisk trot. Moving to the edge of the floating portion of the fortress, she sprang into the air, spreading her wings wide and catching a pleasant thermal to drift through toward the ground on. It was a beautiful day at least. S saying a quiet word of thanks to the distant Lady Celestia for raising such a lovely sun, she fanned her wings wider, giving them a lazy flap to keep herself aloft. The ever-free forest wasn't far from the citadel's position. After a rather short flight, she found herself at the trees, leading into the somewhat foreboding forest. Landing gently on the ground, she tucked her wings tightly into her sides and started into the trees. Fluttershy, my dear friend, that is very nearly a perfect mend. Fluttershy smiled brightly at her zebra friend's praise. It's nothing special. I learned it from you, after all. Sakura smiled softly in return, delicately examining the injured blue jay's wing. With infinite care, she lifted the bird and settled him into a nest near the roof of her hut. Come, come, let us step outside and gather some herbs. On the way, we can discuss how to best care for birds. Following the strangely attired zebra out into the grove she made her home in, Fluttershy took a moment to appreciate its beauty as she always did. There was something so comforting and inviting to the untamed wilds of the ever-free forest, to the young knight in training. Zakora's hut was in actuality a hollowed out portion of an ancient elm tree. A picturesque brook babbled gently through the grove, running off into the forest. Wild flowers of every shape, size and colour imaginable covered the ground in a dizzying array of colour. Fluttershy always felt so calm and centred when she visited with the druidess. She'd chanced upon her during a training exercise in the Everfree. A pack of timber wolves had been chasing her through the woods, and an injured wing prevented her from flying away. It was Zakora who'd arrived and chased them away. After that, the two had become fast friends. Whenever she had a moment, Fluttershy would visit to learn a bit of woods law or animal care. Today, however, she was finding it hard to focus on Zakora's litany of advice and information. Her thoughts kept straying back to, the cap to Captain Spitfire's words. Fluttershy, you are wearing such a sad frown. Tell me, what has you feeling down? Ruffling her wings in agitation, the Pegasus sighed. It's something the captain said to me. She said I have to find something worth fighting for if I want to be a real paladin. Your captain speaks wise, this is true. Finding a reason to lift your sword is necessary if becoming a knight is the path for you. But how do I know what that reason is? How can I tell if it's the right time to draw my sword? My sire told me a pony should never draw her blade unless they're prepared to take a life. But I don't know if I could ever kill any pony. Zakora paused in her walk, lifting her hoof to stop Fluttershy and nodding along the small river. The Pegasus followed her gaze and saw a large bear swatting fish from the water and onto the bank to be eaten when she felt she'd accumulated enough. Death is just a natural part of the world as life is, my young friend. There will come a time when we almost meet our end. Good and evil exist all the world through. We who champion good must at times decide the fate of those that would bring harm to others like you. Fluttershy watched the bear swat another fish to the bank as a pair of cubs came trundling up to enjoy the meal their mother had provided. She was dimly aware of the druidess taking her leave, wrapped up in her own thoughts. Eventually, she settled on the ground to watch the family of bears. It wasn't long before the mother took note of her, casting her a warning glare before settling down with her cubs to eat. <coughs> the young knight-to-be watched the family of bears in silence for a time. This was something she could fight to protect. Not necessarily these bears, but a family's right to live, to do the things every pony deserved to be free to do. She knew there were bad things in the world, evils that couldn't be reasoned with. She was even aware that there were ponies out there, 
so twisted and cruel that no amount of kindness would reach their hearts. Still, the thought of actually killing one. She sighed and finally rose to her hooves. The sun was starting to set and she had to get back to the citadel. Looking toward the sky, a flash of colour caught her eye. Curiously, she spread her wings, taking flight. Flying in the Everfree was always a difficult venture. The trees were massively tall, grew close together and had thick canopies. Pushing through some branches, she found herself a clear open space above the trees. Her eyes widened at the creature perched not a foot from her nose. A bird almost as large as she was gazed back at her with intelligent golden-hued eyes. Its pilgrimage was a vivid mixture of reds, oranges and yellows, giving the impression of the bird's body flam trailing flames. Oh, my. Um, hello there. The gorgeous bird crooned softly, turning its head to gaze at her with its other eye. Fluttershy settled unsteadily on a branch across from the bird. I've never seen a bird like you before. The bird cooed softly again, ruffling its feathers and puffing its chest out with a touch of pride. Its antics drew a smile from the mare. You certainly have lovely colouring. I wish I knew what you were. The bird spread its wings abruptly and vaulted from the branch, flying a short distance away and alighting in another tree gazing back at her expectantly. Confusion clear on her face, Fluttershy took off after the bird. You want me to follow you? In response, the bird jumped into the air again, flying further this time. Curiosity mingled with fear. Fluttershy knew the forest was home to many dangerous creatures, but this bird didn't seem hostile. Deciding to err on the side of caution, Fluttershy reached within herself for one of the many abilities every paladin possessed. Feeling the magic well up from her core and settle around her eyes, she gazed at the bird once more. If it were an evil creature, her sight would reveal a crimson aura around the bird. Seeing nothing didn't necessarily mean it was good aligned, but she knew it wasn't evil, and at worst its attentions were mischievous. Deciding to humour the bird, she began to fly more assuredly. Noting the determination on the mare's face, the bird seemed to nod and set off with a steadier pace. Fluttershy followed it for a time, weaving around branches and through the trees deeper in the forest. Her trepidation grew as she realised she was deeper than she'd ever been before. She was about to consider turning back when the bird stopped abruptly, not landing in a tree as she expected, but dropping to the forest floor. Folding her wings against her body, Fluttershy did likewise, eyeing the bird curiously as she approached, when the sudden sound of metal ringing on stone caught her ears. Perking them to their full height, she crept forward, into the bushes the bird had landed behind. Just beyond her hiding place was a deep chasm. She could see many ponies chained together by their hind legs, holding picks and shovels, standing above them, cracking the occasional rip, whip or giving some slow worker a vicious jab with a rusted spear were large, bipedal canine creatures. Fluttershy sucked in her breath. Diamond dogs! Is this what you wanted to? She trailed off as she realised the bird had left. She was alone in the forest, overlooking a gem mine being mined by enslaved ponies. Righteous fury flared in the young mare's heart at the sight of her fellows being treated in such a way. Her detect evil effect was still working, and she could see brilliant crimson auras surrounding each of the canine beasts. Fluffing her wings nervously, she stared down at the mine. She knew the smart thing to do would be to go back to the citadel and get reinforcements, then come down in force. She turned to do just that when a flash of light off metal caught her eye, turning her attention to the bright glint her breath caught in her throat. A brilliant mithril shield lay tossed haphazardly on its side against one of the filthy huts the dogs must use as their living spaces. She recognised the symbol emblazoned proudly across the front as that of her sires. Could, could he have been captured and even now be held prisoner? Narrowing her eyes, she didn't see any sort of auras around the hut 
meaning it was likely unguarded. Taking a deep breath to cover her courage, she crept from her hiding place, tucking her wings to her sides and angling downward for a rapid dive towards the back of the hut. Flaring her wings open at the last second halted her descent and she landed as quietly as she could. Carefully peeking around the edge of the hut, she detected one of the beasts approaching from the right, but it was still a short ways off. Quickly slipping around to the front of the hut, she ducked inside and shut the door gently behind herself. Turning, she found a well-built unicorn stallion chained to the ground. A thick spike rammed clean through one of his hind hooves and actually pinning him to the rocky ground. His white coat was caked with blood and dirt, while his messy blue streaked mane and tail were equally caked in blood. Sir Shining Armour, she hissed softly under her breath. The stallion stirred, cracking his eyes open. Fl Fluttershy? What are you doing here? How'd you... He hissed sharply in pain as the hoof with the spike rammed through it shifted, jarring the metal a bit. Oh, oh dear. Just relax, my lord. I'll get you out of here. Shining Armour nodded. I don't know how to... I don't know or care how you found me. If you can get me loose and patched up, we can get back and bring reinforcements. There aren't too many dogs here. One or two more knights should be able to do it. Fluttershy frowned at the sound of paws thudding outside. She shrank back into the corner and held her breath, waiting for the diamond dogs to pass. Keeping her ears trained towards the door, she crept back over to her sigh. All right, sir. This is going to hurt. Fluttershy offered him the hilt of her sword to bite down on, which he did gratefully. Taking a deep breath, she moved to his injured hoof and gripped the spike firmly. Already he groaned and bit down harder on the leather hilt. Closing her eyes, she took a second breath and heaved as hard as she could, ripping the spike out of the ground and her fellow paladin's hoof. Shining groaned loudly as pain filled the shiver as pain filled shivers wrecked his body. Fluttershy hastily laid her hooves over the openly bleeding sore, calling on another of her abilities. Warm healing magic fluttered through her hooves into Shining's. The bleeding stopped almost immediately. I'm sorry, sir. We'll need to get you to a cleric to properly close the hole. A few minutes of laboured breathing later, Shining Armour spat the sword from his mouth. He waited patiently as Fluttershy wound some bandages from her bag around his hoof. It's... Uh, all right, Fluttershy, you did just fine. Now let's get out of here. Fluttershy set her jaw firmly. We don't need to go back to the Citadel for a mother, another paladin, my lord. He raised his eyebrows. We don't? She shook her head. Your reinforcements are right here. Warring emotions flared up in the stallion's eyes. Fluttershy, I appreciate the sentiment, but you, you know, have your, uh, no killing thing. Fluttershy frowned. I don't like the idea, and I think we should give them a chance to res surrender peacefully, but you would have died from the infection in your hoof, and who knows how many other ponies they've already killed in their minds. They have to be stopped, and they have to be stopped now. Shining Armour stared hard at his squire. He'd only been in charge of her for the last year and a half, after her last squire sent her away in disgust. He was getting somewhat frustrated himself, but like Spitfire, he could see the enormous potential she had dwelling inside. Finally, he nodded. All right, Fluttershy, first off, we need to get my arms back. She nodded, as if expecting this. Your shield is right outside the hut. I'm not sure where your sword is, but there are a few less impressive weapons piled outside too. Their leader took it for himself, thought it was shiny enough that it should belong to him. I'll make do with a loner until he can be convinced to give mine back. Let's move, squire. Drawing her own sword and shield from her back, Fluttershy took the lead, again surprising him. Yes, sir. 
Easing outside, she looked back and forth, her evil detecting sight showing no foes nearby. She shoved the door open further, allowing her sight to exit. Shining Armor walked with only a slight limp on his bad hoof. Fluttershy knew her healing well, reclaiming his fine shield and choosing one of the long swords for himself. He turned to the mare with a res resolute nod. Let's save some ponies. Fluttershy was content to allow him to take the lead now. She followed close behind, eyes constantly scanning for signs of enemies. Tapping him on the flank, she noticed a head, tapping the stone three times with a hoof, three enemies nearby. Shining nodded and activated his own detect evil magic. Sidling around the corner, the elder paladin cleared his throat firmly. One of the two things is uh, one of two things is going to happen here, gentlemen. You're going to drop those poor excuses for weapons and surrender, or my squire and I are going to send you howling to the pits of Tartarus. The choice is yours. It was almost funny how shocked the dogs looked at the pair of ponies' sudden appearance. Scrambling to their paws, they rapidly drew their own blades. We beat you once, stupid pony. We beat you twice. Fluttershy looked confused a moment. How did they beat you, my lord? Shining snorted. They snuck up behind me and clubbed me in the back of the head. I wouldn't call that defeating me. Turning his attention back to the dogs, he scowled. What'll it be, flea bags? Snarls of rage were their response as the dogs threw themselves forward. Even armed, there were only two ponies after all, and they were much smaller to boot. The first thrust his spear at shining armour. The experienced knight barely flinch, flinching as he shifted his shield into the way of the thrust. The flimsy spear had snapped in half, then the shaft followed suit, causing the dog to stumble and land prone at Shining's hooves. The stallion reversed his grip on the sword and slammed the pommel, pommel into the back of the beast's head, knocking it unconscious. By then the second dog was upon him, wielding a pair of wickedly curved daggers with much great which, with much greater skill than his fellow. Fluttershy was about to intervene when the third dog charged at her. She released a strangled yelp and skipped backwards as the brute brought down a heavy club on the spot she just occupied, cracking the stone. It was all too well and good to say she was ready for combat, but suddenly being thrust into a life or death situation was terrifying. The dog seemed to be a flurry of club and claws. Nothing, something always rushing into sweat or batter at the beleaguered mare. The more he pressed his attack, however, the more her confidence grew. In comparison to sparring with Captain Spitfire or her training with Sir Shining Armour, the dog's clumsy swings were almost too easy to read. She began to block and parry with more ease. Soon she was pushing him back. Shining Armour had already dispatched his second foe, and at first turned to help his squire, only to find it was the dog who needed help. The normally timid Pegasus was darting and dealing quick jabs or bashes with her shield, drawing pained yelps from the dog. After blocking his club with her shield and shoving him back hard, his guard was wide open and she lunged him with a powerful thrust. Her blade passed through his chest easily, and she looked nearly as surprised as the rapidly dying Diamond Dog did. Fluttershy stepped back quickly, pulling her sword from the dying creature, staring at it in quiet contemplation. She delicately stepped around the spreading pool of blood coming from the dead dog. We should keep going, sire. Shining Armour nodded slowly. Right. That was some excellent blade work, Fluttershy. I'm proud of you. Th thank you, sir. I just... I killed him. It was so easy. Effortless, almost. Her voice was, a, was quivering a little. M M Lord, I, I don't... Shining Armour laid a hoof on her shoulder. Fluttershy, you did what you had to do. Taking a life is never easy. Emotionally, I mean. Physically, that, that did look pretty easy, yeah. He cracked a smile. 
Seeing that his squire wasn't returning it, he cleared his throat. But it never stops hurting when you have to do that. I know, I don't like it. Captain Spitfire doesn't like it, and I have a sneaking suspicion your father doesn't like it. Fluttershy took a shuddering breath and closed her eyes tightly, suppressing the tears that wanted to flow. You're right, sir. We, we do this so no pony else has to, don't we? He nodded. We do. We have to be strong for them, for the sake of every pony in Equestria. Resolute again, Fluttershy stood at his side. I can be strong, sir. His smile was warm. I know, Fluttershy. We've known that all along. We were just waiting for you to realise it. For the first time in her life, Fluttershy felt it too. The chieftain of the Diamond Dog tribe of the Everfree was a towering monster of a beast. Rumour was he was half ogre, or had an ogre somewhere in his ancestry at the very least. The gleaming blade, clutched in one fist, looked comically tiny in his huge paw. The sharply barbed whip he held in his other was significantly less ridiculous, at least to the ponies on the receiving end of it. Work, ponies. No sleep, no lay down. Just work. Work till you die. Bringing the whip back, he selected a faltering earth pony mare. Snapping his wrist forward, he sent the cruel weapon arching out at the hapless pony. His eyes went wide as saucers as the Pegasus mare le leapt from above, her sword cleanly slicing the whip in half, sending the front half flopping to the ground. What? What is this? Free pony? Pony slave! Not have swords! That bad pony! He only grew f further incensed as, this, as a second pony leapt out, the prisoner from the hut no less. You! You not take knife back, is mine. Shining armor scowled. I'll deal with the leader. You get the ponies free and keep an eye out for more dogs. Fluttershy nodded as she set to work following his orders. She tried to tune out the sound of the fight behind her, thrusting, trusting in Shining Armor to deal with the leader. Rushing to the side of the nearest group of slaves, she brought her finely honed sword up and swung it into the chains binding them. The tempered steel easily shattered through the rusty iron chain, and the first group of ponies were already working to free themselves. Turning to the second group, she drew up short as a pair of dogs rushed her. Chanting a swift prayer to Lady Celestia, she felt magical strength surge through her limbs as her muscle visibly swelled. The dog's eyes widened, as the little mare suddenly became a significantly less little mare and glared them down. Drop your weapons and leave now! Looking from the furious and bulky pony before them, then over to the, their boss who was struggling with a second one, and finally to the group of recently freed slaves behind the mare, their choice was simple. Dropping their weapons they fled, howling all the while. Blowing out the breath she'd been holding, Fluttershy moved from group to group, working to free the slaves. Thankfully, her magically enhanced muscle deflated soon to her normal civite physique. It was great for intimidation, but it sure made it harder to get around. Looking about in satisfaction at all the newly freed ponies, she turned her attention back to Shining Armor. She was alarmed to find the stallion's sword had broken and the only reason he was still alive was the brightly shining magical shield enveloping him. Her sire was definitely no wizard, but rumour had it he'd come from a magical pedigree and had developed and mastered a spell all of his own. Wizards called it Shining's Aegis, in honour of the stallion who, who'd created it. The shield was supposed to be able to withstand nearly any assault, but Shining Armor's sword was powerfully enhanced as well. Already tiny cracks were showing in the shield. Snapping her wings open, she took to the air. Gaining altitude, she glanced down, fear gripping her heart as Shining's shield finally shattered into glittering pieces. 
Banking sharply, she angled downward and dropped into a reckless dive, aiming for the massive diamond dog. Leave him alone! Her blade burst into brilliant white radiance as she channeled her fury into it. The dog looked up with a dim expression of surprise on his face, an expression that would forever be frozen on the absurdly decapitated head as Fluttershy brought her sword cleanly through his neck and out the other side at the end of her dive. She hit the ground solidly on all fours, just as the dog's body slumped over to the side and boomed into the ground. Breathing heavily, the mare hurried to her sire's side. Are you all right, my lord? Shining armor beams with pride. I am Fluttershy, thanks to you, and so are a lot of other ponies today. Already the freed slaves were crowding around the pair, cheering for their saviors. Fluttershy's natural dislike of, cl of crowds was starting to rear its head again, and she shuffled uncomfortably under the praise heaped upon her. As the knights led the ponies from the mine, she couldn't help but glance, gaze back at the huge monster she'd felled, a look of sadness in her eyes. It's with great pride that I name you Dame Fluttershy, a fully realized knight of the realm of Cantalot, and paladin of the Order of Radiance. May you bring honor to yourself, your lord, and your country, so long as you live. Fluttershy's head was bowed in embarrassment at the wild cheering coming from the fellow paladins. Captain Spitfire grinned at the end of her speech, leaning in close. I knew you had it in you, kid. Shuffling a little in her gleaming plate mail, Fluttershy's smile grew a little at that. She scanned the crowd looking for one particular face. She wasn't disappointed. Sir Brightwing, the bold, was still an imposing stallion, even well into middle age. Standing a good deal taller than many of his fellows, his brilliant golden armour drew plenty of eyes. If any thought his bright pink mane a touch on the feminine side, none were bold enough to comment on it. His eyes were wet with unshed tears of pride as he watched his daughter pass into true knighthood. Fluttershy stuck around the party long enough to be polite, before excusing herself and following after her father. Huh, hello, sir. His smile was warm and inviting. Hello, Fluttershy. I'm very proud of you. I know it hasn't been easy for you, and that at times you wished, you wished to be somewhere else. I also knew, however, that this is where you belonged, and not because it's what I did. I could have just as easily taken after your mother, and no doubt you'd, you'd have been a wonderful priestess. Fluttershy settled before her father, content to just be in his presence. But you have a fire in your heart, Fluttershy. Most of the time it's a tiny ember, but I know that if stoked properly, it would become a roaring blaze, blaze of righteous strength, powerful enough to protect all of Equestria. I expect to hear many great things about you in the near future, my dear. Fluttershy sniffed a little and wiped a hoof across her eyes. Thanks, Daddy. The powerful stallion enfolded the smaller mare in a fierce hug. No matter what you do, Fluttershy, I'll always be there for you. I'll always be proud of you. <coughs> Fluttershy returned the embrace happily, not breaking it for some time. Finally, her father stepped back and cleared his throat gruffly. Well... A true paladin such as yourself probably doesn't want to sit around doing nothing. I have your first assignment. The newly minted paladin's eyes widened. Oh, already? Her father nodded slowly. Yes, it is an easy one, not to worry. Lady Celestia's church is opening a new temple in a town called Ponyville. It borders the Everfree Forest, and she has personally requested you by name to be the temple's official knight protector. It will only have a staff of three priestesses, so the job shouldn't be terribly difficult. Doing a little quick thinking, the mayor realized that she'd heard of the town. Even better, it was very near Zakora's Grove, even closer than the Citadel. Thank you, Dad. I won't let you down. You never could, Fluttershy. Now go enjoy your party. Spend some time with your friends. 
you leave in the morning. You finished with a crisp salute. Eyes shining with tears again, she did likewise. Yes, sir. Bright wind watched his filly rush excitedly from the room, a smile playing on her face. They grow up so fast, don't they? Hmm, some of them do. Some of them never seem to grow up. He turned a stern eye to the large mare who'd alighted upon, upon his balcony. Honestly, Celestia, rocks to cake? You can't find a better use of your time? The ancient archmaid shot a dirty look at, at the phoenix as she calmly alighted on the stallion's back. Philomena, you ratted me out to bright wind. The archmage, which is familiar, caught a mocking laugh, enjoying a small cookie offered by the Pegasus stallion. Why Fluttershy? Celestia's look turned serious. You always did prefer to get right to the heart of the matter, didn't you? Sighing softly, she turned away, gaze fixed on the rising moon. A darkness is stirring, bright wind, my friend. A powerful darkness I fear beyond even our formidable strength. The world needs new heroes. It needs the elements once again. Brightwind scowled. Impossible. You know the elements are useless without. Celestia cut him off with a sharp nod. New elements of harmony are indeed needed, Brightwind. His eyes widened at the implications. And you think... Celestia smiled softly, laughter dancing in her eyes. I never think, Brightwind. I know. I always know. The laughter faded as she looked in, looked to the moon again. Always. Fluttershy character sheet. Paladin, 6. Lawful good. Strength, 12. Dexterity, 14. Constitution, 14. Intelligence, 12. Wisdom, 16. Charisma, 16. Special abilities. Aura of good. Detect evil at will. Smite evil once per day. Immune to all diseases. Lay on hooves. Divine grace. Aura of courage. Turn undead. Favoured spells. Cure light wounds. Bless. Bold, bold strength. Shining armour character sheet. Paladin. 12. Lawful good. Strength. 18. Dexterity. 10. Constitution. 16. Intelligence. 12. Wisdom 14, Charisma 17. Special Abilities. Shining's Aegis. Once per day per int mod, creates a shield that can absorb 1d10 damage per level. Favoured Spells. Divine Favour. Shield Other. Prayer. Special Gear. Bright Fang. Plus 3 Holy Longsword. Three times per day, it may be used to dispel illusions and transmutations in a 50-foot radius. Author's note. And here we have Paladin Shy. Also added alignments to the previous two chapters.